Hey guys, Shahid here again and welcome to the advanced analysis video. And honestly, the only reason I use the word advanced here is because this video goes beyond the interpretation of lines and edges, but this will in no way be difficult. Actually, if anything, this video will be the easier of the analysis videos despite the naming. All right, so what are we doing? Well, I'm essentially going to go over a few helpful tips to reinforce your analysis technique and help you become really competent at visualizing what is going on with the given views. All right, so the first of these tips has to do with sloped faces that we talked about in the previous video. So let's consider this slope here and let's move it to the side and consider what the top and end views would look like. While they're both pretty intuitive since this is a simple object, the top view would look like this and the end view would look like this. It seems pretty straightforward, but the reason I bring it up is that sometimes students misjudge how big a feature really is. For example, this sloped face here appears longer than what the correct views actually show us. And I can exaggerate the slope a little bit to show you guys what I mean. All right, so here's a very similar object, just with a steeper slope. And the corresponding top view would look like this, and the end view would look like this. So when we think about the end view of this object, we have to be critical to not think about the slope, but the square we would see if we were looking at the object directly from this direction. And when we think about it like that, we can see that we would actually pretty much only see the back square outline of the slope. And I can even point this out with the top view. It's really easy to misjudge the top view and think that it would look like um, this big square right here. But really, we have to remember that we are looking at the object directly from above. And so we would only see the bottom rectangular outline of the slope, just like this. And to be honest, this point is more important for the keyhole section as we are directly given the 3D view on the question, but it's also important to keep in mind for the top front end section because you don't want to mentally visualize something incorrectly. This is all about building good habits. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about slopes, so let's move on to the next point which I like to call projection alignment. And projection alignment is simply a built-in feature of each top front end question that we can use to help us with matching certain aspects of an object. And I'll show you guys what I mean. So let's bring in the front and end projections and pretend that this is what we are given on a question. And guys, keep in mind once again that on the PAT, you'll only be given the two views. You don't have the luxury of having the 3D representation as I've included here on the left. And obviously you won't have the animation on the right. Both of these are only here to serve the purpose of helping you understand the concepts I'm talking about. All right, so projection alignment for the front and end view is simple since these two projections share the same plane of reference, as in both the front and end views are perpendicular to the z-axis. So because of this, we can directly match the features of the object to the height level seen. Now that sounds a little confusing, so let me show you guys what I mean with some more graphics. So essentially, the number of height levels on the front view will always be reflected in the end view as well in one way or another. So if we were to count up the height levels on the front view, we would count 1, 2, and 3. There are three height tiers or height levels shown in the front view. And if we extend these lines all the way to the end view, we can see that they perfectly separate the object into three height levels as well. Now you might say, well, how does this help us? Well, it helps us identify what is what in each view, which is super useful when you're trying to mentally visualize the object. So for example, using the height tiers, I can easily tell that this extension here is this extension here. 
because they are both the only extensions on the second height here. And now I know that from the top view, which is what I'm trying to uh, answer in this question, I know that this extension would only extend up to this point, not all the way to the edge of the figure. And similarly, I can see that this extension here matches up with this extension on the end view because they are both on the third height level. Again, this gives us an idea of where this extension should end on the end view. So it's super helpful. You guys will use this all the time on this section, so make sure you understand this really well. Okay, so now let's look at a situation uh, where we are only given the front and the top view. And it's essentially the same concept, but here it's actually a bit easier since we can usually match every extension with its position along the width of the object. Okay, so just like last time, we can identify some edges on any of the two views really and mentally extend the lines and see where they line up with the other view. And so what does this tell us? Well, we can tell that these two extensions here on the front view match these extensions on the top view. And this would be helpful because then we would know where they both end on the end view, which is Again, what we are trying to figure out here in the first place. So we would know that the red extension would only extend up to this point here, and the blue extension would only extend to this point right here, marked by the blue arrow. Now the projection alignment technique also quickly tells us what this face is all about. This alone would cause confusion, but having the top view with it, we can easily see that the green face is the face we would see here. And this is important because then we would know that we would see a dashed line at this location on the corresponding end view. All right, now we've gone over what projection alignment looks like if we have the front and end view and the front and top views given. But what if we are only given the top and end view? Now it's not so easy because our two given views are not really aligned. We can't draw vertical or horizontal lines here. So what do we do? Well, you have a couple options here. First, you can mentally imagine this edge right here um, coming all the way down here. And so we would pretty much be toppling this top view on its side. And it would look something like this. And from here, we can again draw vertical lines and match extensions on the top view to the extensions on the end view. I'm not going to go through it, but it would be the same concept as before. So we would be able to tell that, for example, this edge here would correspond to this point here. And projection alignment will also confirm that. Okay, so that's one way of doing it you just mentally topple the top view over on its right side. Now, there's another way you can do this. Instead of mentally toppling the top view on its right side, you can imagine the extensions of the top view being reflected along a diagonal line like so. So for example, this little rectangle we see here, uh, we can match to this extension on the end view. And this would instantly tell us that this rectangle on the top view actually represents the tallest feature we have on the object. Because remember, we don't have this 3D representation on the exam. I've only put it here as a luxury so we can all be on the same page during the explanations. Okay, and so that's the second way you can use projection alignment if you are only given the top and end views. Now keep in mind guys, this isn't something you're going to be doing all the time. Mentally visualizing lines and toppling views is time sensitive. After a while, you guys will become so good at this that you'll just naturally do it as part of your analysis. It won't be a special technique that you will have to bring out when you are on a tough question. No, it's not like that at all. This will all become second nature to you guys. For the purpose of explaining it though, I usually have to draw things out and it can get wordy, but rest assured, projection alignment is a pretty
pretty simple concept that you will begin to use on every question, whether you notice it or not. And honestly, I think that's a good way to end off this video. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.